cares about him. Right. Because I mean, he's fucked him over. Right. The guy does not deserve to be free. Right. I don't think he deserves all of that time in prison if what you're saying is somewhat true. And it was kind of coached and this thing was kind of set up and, you know, the murder for hire shouldn't stick. I, I don't believe he should, he, should, he should spend the rest of his life. But, you know, he does deserve time and does deserve his rehabilitation. I don't think you're going to change that guy. Right, you're not. But, uh, but he, is a, he, is a, he is a destructive human being and he deserves to be in prison. So that's my our position on it. Eric and I have totally lied you and that. Eric, You and Eric, but not Rebecca. Yeah, because I think she's sears more on this that where you were kind of alluding to, like the system is is fucked up, and I, I do agree with that. That you know, but part of what made Tiger King Tiger King is Joe's, you know, ha- has this antihero kind of DNA, and people connect with that. And it happened to be at a time where there was a very contentious election, and you had Trumpism in this country, and I think a lot of people had a lot of people connected with with people like Joe. Um, so you have that, you know, you have that those elements in it where he's likable, of course. Joe's very he's, but, he's very personable, and you know he that was part of his his power over Travis and and Dylan and all these guys is he was charismatic, but you know that that same that same charisma caused him to feel immortal and and above the law. And it just bit him in the ass. But, you know, maybe maybe the answer to this is, like you said, it's it's not a second season of Netflix. Maybe it's a first season of a reality show that that doesn't end until the story ends, you know, on a weekly basis on on some network. Um, you know. Being. That's that's what, that's what it could ultimately become. Or, or there's it's you know there's a spinoff of people from Tiger King, like you know J- Jeff and Lauren go to Africa, and, right. and that's its own thing. I mean that's a well, that's you know a real you know who already wants I mean. you know who already wants to do that is Josh Gates. Oh really? Yeah, it's like, and I'm thinking, well, you know, I, I, we really like to show. And then the other person was Zach Baggins, you know, because that Baggins did the. The ghost adventure thing at the park, and he's kept it. Now we talk every damn day, and 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 Bagans was given a, he was given a production deal for Discovery Plus, and he says, you know, I want to put you guys on the road, and you go to all these places, and you know, so I think our story will continue as long as they don't trump up some shit that gets me locked up. Come here, baby. And what you do? And, you know, I, I think it'd be interesting. You know, the fact that my phone still rings off the hook tells me that people still are interested and invested in our story. I, look, I think if what you're telling me happens the way it's covered, I think you will have plenty of opportunity. Because I think it does, if, if you hand over this material that does kind of take the pressure off of you in right. this whole thing. Right. Uh, it does give you some redemption in a way that gives you a lot more, um, I think, more opportunity than maybe others may take risk on. And so you might have a shot. Right. I, I totally believe that. But only with you guys, um, because you know us and you know we'll show up to film. We'll do what we say we do. You know, it, it's hard for a network. We, we actually had a production deal with TLC. And it was, I, I'm the one that pulled out of it, believe it or not, no matter what they tell you, because they wanted it. They didn't want it to be about animals. They wanted it to be about me and Lauren and our sex life. And and I said, you know what? That's not who we are. That's that's just one of the one of the no. What? That's just one of the no. things we do with our lives. And but yeah. stop, stop, stop. And I just I didn't want to go in that direction. I'll send you the I'll send you the scissor yeah. scissor. It was completely stupid and bullshit and. And they didn't want it to be animal related because they didn't want to have to do a PETA on a on a. They didn't want to do a PETA on a on a paid on a paid. What do they call it? On a. <laughs> what, what do you? Uh, not on, not on a, they didn't want to deal with PETA because right, PETA doesn't fuck, want to fucking with that. They didn't want PETA the fucking with advertising. Yeah. It had to be something like a Hulu or a Netflix or. A, uh, a subscription television. Um, so, you know, they, they said, here's our vision. I said, here's my vision. And our visions weren't aligned. So 
I just said, I'm not interested. You couldn't pay me enough to do a Kardashian version of my life because that's not interesting, you know? Well, yeah, it's also just intrusive and just yeah, it's, yeah. It's so manipulated. Uh, you know, these, yeah. these, that's the problem with reality television. It's like things are set up, you yeah. know, and these yeah. moments are set up in a way that's not authentic. And right. You're not an actor. And it, so. and it's, it bores the shit out of you because yeah. it's embarrassing. And you know, I just... That's why I said no. I, there's not enough money. I don't. I don't want my family to be embarrassed by me any more than they already are. Well, I. I mean, listen. You, you've you've made it this far, and we. I mean, I'm totally impressed by everything you've been able to put together in the media and just creating brand. It's been pretty, pretty remarkable, Jeff. What you and Lauren has done, Lauren have done. So. But I, I think, you know, let's see where this kind of chapter ends, but we should continue conversation. I think you have potential of doing more than just this. And I would be patient. That's my only advice. Right. Wait for the right one to come. Right. Um, but if you guys do decide to go far, that would be um, I, I'm sure there's a lot of different you know opportunities and channels to find uh, a place for it. Um, cause that, that, that possibility seems interesting to someone, you know, especially if this goes the way you think it's going to go with John, right. um, you, you have a, a lot more opportunity set than you do now. Can you imagine, um, so I, can you I imagine, see a lot of people being in that. Can you imagine the media behind the, the announcement that, and can you imagine how many pairs of underwear Carol Baskin will shit through <laughs> when she finds out that she's being named in a Rico lawsuit yeah i can't imagine i i really i really can't um what they're trying like if, if they can have space on a show jeff which is crazy them or even even the stuff that you've seen that's been produced so far uh you guys can can totally have your own space it, it's amazing and but also like a lot of people don't watch these things and that's the reality of it right a lot of people don't watch the other you know things that we saw doc ansel's little thing that was ridiculous why did you guys even you know, not, that, not, not to question you because look at the success and emmy nominations and all that other shit but what was the doc Annel angle because he really wasn't involved in joe's story was it just because he was so eccentric that you wanted to kind of show what what insane people own big cats is that the well, Doc, Doc, like Mario and some others, you know, they were just the original show's intent was kind of, um, if Eric mentioned to you, was wasn't necessarily about Joe and Carol. It was more about you know, centric people who keep exotic animals, and you know, these are all the people and just interesting, interesting people, interesting characters that that were that obviously were were kind of counterculture. Like right. they were, you know, Doc is Doc is very much that. Right. Um, and, and lives in his own universe. Now you kind of have him plus the Yokoville stuff and just his personality. He's very watchable. Um, so Doc just was, just he became that, you know, more than anything. And obviously he's kind of a performer and he has a lot of, you know, a lot of shit that he's no like one else sees circus. and you he's see like some of that. But yeah. he's uh, he's an interesting guy, that's for sure. So that's what it was. It was really the intention of, doing these like exposés on people um, originally about, you know, these eccentric kind of big cat owners in, in America and then it evolved into, you know, the Joe and Carol story. Then you just had this, this whole like mashup of, of these different departures into different worlds. So it all kind of worked, but it was a, it was definitely like, that was the first attempt and then it evolved to Joe and then you found Joe and the Carol thing, as you know, and all that kind of led the, the drive of it. But um, we had to find space for all of these other voices. Right. You know, Mar Mario, by the way, had like, he was in it for like three minutes. He was the smartest, I think, of anyone because he held out. Um, and there was enough of a preview of him that people were interested and he just held out to the very end and did a really good deal for himself. It sounds like he's doing a, he's got real people behind him producing a scripted series in his life, but she has a, you know, he has a kind of crazy, amazing life story. Well, when you, when you read on Pablo Escobar, the way he did, I think he, I think he's opening himself up to the cartel doesn't forget. And and guess who we hang out with on a regular basis 
in Dallas. Lauren and I are best, no, not best friends, but I mean, we're really good friends with Pablo's grandson. Oh, really? And he lives in Dallas, and he knows very well some of the some of the events that led up to Pablo's capture and, and murder or whatever they call it. And I, you know, I, I don't know somebody as smart as Mario is doing himself any favors by sticking, because you know, he was sentenced to something like 177 years in federal prison. Yeah, he had two consecutive life sentences. Yeah, and one how, did, how, yeah. Did he, how did he get out after seven or 11, you know? He he ratted on the biggest on the biggest drug dealer in history, and I think I'd want to stay. Yeah, Mario's cool. I like Mario. I talked to. I That's talked, why. That's what I, I mean. He's a, he's actually has like he has also his morals, which is actually amazing. Right. Like he's you, he's you, actually a really great guy. I like him a lot. You murder an FBI agent, <laughs> and you know you're still likable. So. And and he told me, you know, when we were talking about Carol, that Carol would never be convicted without the body. And he goes, "That's not true, my friend." <laughs> he says, "He says uh, he says they convicted me on murder, um, him and his father on murder of an FBI agent." And he says, "And I promise you, they didn't find his body." So that's like, okay, well, if that's not an admission of guilt, but I, you know, I like Mario. I hope nothing bad ever happens to him, but. He's he's one that Carol just doesn't fuck with very often, and that's got to be worth something. I think she knows. I think she, and you know she started she she kind of backed off Black Jaguar too. You know? Yeah, listen, he sh- uh, uh, rightfully so. Like it's a territory she doesn't need to get involved in, and there's definitely consequences to it. It's yeah. not worth it. Yeah, you start fucking <laughs> with the cartels. He's got, he's got Peta fighting those battles. Peta doesn't care, you know. Right. So. Well, Peter, Peter's safe because it's a big building full of big assholes. Carol Baskin's got one little house that's got two big assholes in it, so they're easy targets. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, with, with Peter, I, I it's like the cutting, time, cutting the head listen, off the I, I snake. I, uh, the Peter thing I don't understand, but. Yeah. So anyway... Uh, these well, guys. So you guys. So you guys are meeting up now for dinner, right? We're meeting up for dinner, and then John. That's what happens when a cat walks on your phone. John was. Um, John was um, receptive to doing more shooting. Um, if you guys want more footage, if you want like the departure, or if if I end up taking John to the prison tomorrow. I suppose we could um, have a tag along in the car. Um, it's all up to you guys. I'll do yeah, whatever. Yeah, I think we'll, while we're there, I mean, so are you guys meeting at your place or are you guys going to a restaurant? Well, I think initially I'm not. He, I'm not cooking spaghettios for him, so I got to take him to. I got to take him to a restaurant, but um, I could try to pick a restaurant that would allow us to film. That's just normally noisy and stuff. Could we help with getting like maybe food there? Um, I mean, we probably could. Yeah, um, if you want to text me a place that you know, we can just get, and you know, if you just send me what you guys want, we can maybe do that, because it's, it's going to be hard, to, otherwise it's hard to film in a restaurant. Right. We're not going to get the, we won't even get any of the conversation. It's hard. <clears throat> even the stuff we shot yesterday was, like, kind of unusable, but, um, yeah, uh, that'd be my only recommendation if you want to do something tonight. The stuff from Toby Keith was was not. It's hard, yeah. I mean, we got some of it, but it's it's there's a lot of background <clears throat> background noise because we don't have we didn't have a sound technician with us to help balance this balance the atmosphere. Right. Um, but we got some of it. And, you know, it's not completely lost, but it's still just tinny and noisy. Um, the restaurant stuff's really hard, so I think we'd have to. Yeah, ideally, you know, in a quiet place would be ideal if you guys can do it and we can maybe get some, you know, to take out or something to help with. What about... What about a room in Windstar and we just order food up there? Would that be... That would be okay. That's a good idea. He's, he's not staying there, is he? he? He couldn't get in. It was sold out last night, but I think they'd have a room tonight. 
yeah, let me check into that and text you back. That's a good idea. Okay. And then we can, we can just sneak the cameras in. It's not like you guys are going in. When we went into the Zaza down in Dallas, they had 12 carts. <laughs> I heard, yeah. Oh, it was insane. a disaster. I don't know how we... Yeah, that was yeah. crazy. But it's a cool room, though. It was very cool. It was very cool. Um, okay, well, let me figure out. I'll check the Windstar option. What time would it be? Um, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, uh, let me check, let me check out with these guys. Probably sooner the better. I have been there a long time. Um, five five thirty something here. So whenever five thirty. Okay. Like within the next hour. Yeah, hour or two. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let me let me work on that. And get back to you. Okay, hey buddy. All right. Should I call this number? Yeah, call this number because it, it rings okay. much louder. Okay, Jeff. Thanks right. so much. All right, bye. Bye.